Hey, it's Alex from Board Game Cove here, and today we are talking about role player adventures. Now, before we dive into that, before I talk about whether you should or shouldn't back it, my overview, my opinion, all that stuff, let's first talk about a few quick things. Yesterday's video was about scalping games. Is it okay? Is it not okay? And I want to touch upon two brief aspects, updates, or whatnot about that video. The first, and I should have covered this in the video, is forgetting for a second my own distaste for it, yet not having a problem with it, I should have made it very clear, in no way does this argument apply to essential goods. Anyone scalping toilet paper, or medicine, or anything like that, it is an entirely different conversation because general economics do not apply to essential goods. Anyone who needs something will pay whatever they need, regardless of the supply and demand. So essential goods are a whole different conversation. My video is specifically talking about non-essential goods. And while the line will be blurred in terms of what is essential, is a meat essential, is medicine essential, is toilet paper essential, I think we can all agree that board games are not essential. Despite how much you and I may feel otherwise, we have other games. That is one. Number two is, I did slightly revise my opinion. Like I said, this is a conversation. This is not just... It starts with my opinion as a, as a baseline, but it doesn't mean that I can't walk away with an adjustment to that opinion, and in this case, I certainly did. There was a comment from a user one sec. I, I'm probably going to butcher this pronunciation, but Asifidius or something like that. He commented that there's no value being added to the transaction. Now, I agree and disagree, and it depends very strongly on who buys the game. I mentioned in the video that you're shifting who gets the game. The person standing in line at Target no longer gets the game, but rather the person staying at home with money gets the game. And to be clear, a few people did comment along these lines, I'm addressing all of those. I still believe that there is a value being provided when someone who wouldn't otherwise have had access now does have access. Again, we may not like it. It may feel distasteful, but I do believe a value is being provided there. Whereas if a value, whereas if the person buying the game is the person who stood in line at Target, you know, again, let's pick John. John goes to Target, buys the game, it's not available, pulls out, its phone, pulls, pulls out his phone, and it's on eBay for $50 more than he could have bought it for. Now there's no value being provided there. Now John just had to pay a premium, when, and the only person, like, like Asa Fidia said, the problem was created and the problem was solved. Meaning the scalper is the one who created this, the, the low availability, and then he solved that low availability. So in other words, he didn't actually do anything for anyone. So I think it does very much depend on who's getting the game. If it's the person who could have and would have gotten it for a lower price, or if it's the person who wasn't going to be able to make it to Target and now is trying to buy it from home. I think, and I know Target sells online, but you get the idea. So I think my opinion does slightly adjust depending on the recipient. I know that makes the entire conversation a little bit more complicated because how can you possibly know who's going to be buying it? But at the end of the day, I think my adjustment, my, my takeaway here was, while I still believe it is not nearly as wrong as people believe and not nearly as problematic, I can certainly agree, given this construct, that there will be some degree of harm involved. There will be some degree of benefit as well, but some degree of harm. That's basically it. Um, Timestamps will be below in case anyone wanted to skip this whole segment on yesterday's video. And if you didn't watch yesterday's video... Well, I'll link to that up above. It is certainly an entertaining discussion, if nothing else. And lastly, I'll make note of this, and keep in mind, someone else may actually do this by the time I'm just filming this in the afternoon, but I was very offended that no one commented on my new icon. People were so caught up in the whole scalping or not scalping that everyone missed the new icon in the video. I have a whole batch of icons for all my different video types, and I was so looking forward to, to everyone's feedback, and my feelings got a little hurt. Sorry, guys. I mean, it's just, it's hard sometimes. That being said, let's jump into Role Player Adventures. Okie dokes, Role Player Adventures. Role Player Adventures is the newest game by Thunderworks Games. This is from, you know, surprisingly enough, this is from the creator of Role Player. Role Player has done phenomenally well, well loved by many, spawned a bunch of expansions, and they also had an offshoot game in the same universe, the Roll and Write, which happens to be, I like the Roll and Write, I, Roll and Write, I like cartographers a lot. Role Player is a game that is on my list of whether or not to get back. I've enjoyed it, I didn't love it. Now, as far as Role Player Adventures, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the, the pledge levels, the gameplay, the, the whether or not you should or shouldn't back it. Am I backing it? So, starting off, off the bat, as a baseline, what we have here is... 
this is an RPG style game, and I would argue it's a more RPG style game than Gloomhaven ever was. Obviously, there's going to be comparisons to Gloomhaven here. We're talking about a hundred dollar price point, a giant big box, uh, building your characters, getting money and experience as you level up across the campaign. It would be hard not to make comparisons to Gloomhaven. That being said, I do think it's very much its own beast. It's very different and possibly in a good way for some, in a bad way for others. And I think the gameplay here is really where it comes down to. While the RPG experience, while the RPG journey seems to remain intact, that aspect of growing of, I would argue it's even better, it's more developed, it's more fleshed out. As you do different things, you'll acquire keywords in the campaign that will affect the things that happen down the line. Did you let that orc out of the dungeon? Did you go down this path? You will, acqu you will acquire certain keywords that will affect how the story plays out and how different things happen as the story progresses. But from a gameplay stance, it seems to be much lesser than Gloomhaven. Not that there's no gameplay at all, do not get me wrong, there's definitely gameplay here. But it does seem to be lighter gameplay, more choose your own adventure combined with aspects of gameplay, aspects of decisions, how you manipulate the dice. There certainly will be gameplay here, but it does not seem, at least from my own cursory overview, that it does not seem to have the depth that Gloomhaven does. Now I will note in general, if, you got, if you're... If you're Watch my videos before, you know that I focus more on whether you should or shouldn't back it from a value proposition. No, I don't focus as much on the gameplay, the rules, and whatnot. I will link to three different videos that cover it very well. First of all, John Gets, Ga John Gets Games did a tremendous job covering the rules. From there, Tantrum House, I thought, did a very solid overview, giving you a good feel for the experience in a short seven minutes. And finally, if you have an hour and a half of free time, Crackalope did an extended gameplay that I think really gave a good feel for the experience. It gave a good feel for what the gameplay will feel like. Again, I'm focusing more on the value, part, value aspect, so I do want to give props to people who do other aspects significantly better than I ever could or would. Well, would, who knows? We've got a long life ahead of us. From there, let's jump into the value propositions. Let's jump into the pledge levels. So, pledge levels. The first off, we got the Adventurer pledge levels at $100. This is a $20 off the MSRP of $120, but shipping. Shipping is a factor. Even in the US, shipping is going to cost you $17, bringing you to basically the same price, price as MSRP. Now, I will say kudos to Thunderworks Games for calling that out themselves. They were very specific. In terms of the why back now, they said lower price in terms of the MSRP, but it doesn't cover shipping. They're not trying to get you one over you over here. They are being very, very clear up, uh, and upfront. So kudos to them for that. From there, we have the Immortal Knights, which comes with, uh, which essentially is the base pledge, but with the expansion included. Again, at a discount of MSRP, but again shipping. And then from there, we have past the retailer pledge. We have the World of Ulos All In, and I'll say there that basically the same thing I said in the Terraforming Mars uh, Kickstarter, which is. Just do the math yourself. Check online, see if you want those games, see if you want which ones you do want, what price points there are, and make a decision based on the price point and the differences and the offer offers being made here. This is a simple math, and the math will change based on your where you buy games, your online store, what country you're in. But just do the math in terms of whether you want to get this or get the expansion separately and come back later. I will note they cover this in their FAQ, but they can ship expansions if you're buying the base game, if you're buying role player, monsters and minions, if you're buying all that stuff, they can potentially ship it to you sooner. Again, you have to figure out the cost aspect, what's cheaper, that you have to figure out for yourself, but if you specifically want to support them and you give them a bigger piece of that pie, by all means do so. Should you back it? Well, it really depends what your motivations are, and we've talked about this before. If you want to support the publisher, go ahead and back it. If you want the game sooner, go ahead and back it. If you want to be a part of the creative journey, go ahead and back it. If you want to develop the game, and this is where it gets tricky, because there are no exclusives in this campaign. There are no exclusives. They have said that themselves. It, it, there will be nothing. They've said they believe that anything that deserves to be in the game should be in the game for everyone. And I respect that, by the way. I want to be very clear. I respect that viewpoint. At the same time, when you're asking people to give up the money a year in advance and with less reviews and only previews, at the same time, you're asking people to take a risk that you're not necessarily giving them a reward for doing so. Meaning I respect the stance 100%. I don't need exclusives in my games. Some of my favorite games do not have exclusives whatsoever. I would say most of my favorite games. But I do believe that if you ask someone to do something extra, you should give them something extra. And that can be price, it can be getting the game earlier, or it can be exclusives. There are no exclusives here. I don't believe the price is better. So I think it really comes down to whether you want to support the publisher or whether you want to get the game earlier. I think those are the only two reasons to genuinely consider backing it. I think nothing else really makes sense, unfortunately. The price part, it will be cheaper later. They're basically giving you the game for MSR MSRP. 
if you don't think this game will be cheaper and again international buyers i know there's always a different conversation i've had different commenters in the past talk about how sometimes depending on the market this might be the best deal in which case go ahead back it by all means but in terms of a re if you have access to this game from your local game store it will definitely be cheaper than msrp which means you are only backing it to support the publisher and because you want it earlier, because you will get it earlier. This is not come on in that sense. And again, I love come on. They give you exclusives. They don't give it to you earlier. Different companies have different pros and cons. I will note one last thing before I get some comments saying that I forgot it. One of the things I talked about is the ability to build the game, the ability to, through your stretch goals, through your pledges, if I can find here, the stretch goals, here we go, through your stretch goals, through your pledges, it will make the game better for everyone. Now, I'm not saying, this next thing I say is not said with authority, it's not said with knowledge of Thunderworks games, it's said in general that the category of stretch goals, which is, I believe in general, stretch goals are mostly mapped out. I believe in general, stretch goals are basically planned out to a large extent of what will or won't make it, and the pacing is set accordingly. That's why many companies have switched to daily stretch goals. It's one less thing to deal with, it takes a lot of tension off, and you end up with the same final product while maintaining that surprise. If Thunderworks games is an exception to this, that may be. I don't know. I don't know if they're an exception. I believe there are exceptions. And I believe that sometimes there's a list of, you know, here are all the things that might be a stretch goal, but it could be that there'll be a small degree of variance. Will that first player marker at the very end make it in? So sometimes there can be a degree of variance. But in case someone says, no, back it now because you'll make the game better for everyone, I believe that's probably not the case. In general, it's not the case. If it is for Thunderworks, if I don't know something about Thunderworks specifically, that these are definitely completely decided based on the stretch goals and based off of nothing else and whatever, could be. I, I, I'm talking from a general sense in this context. I don't know Thunderworks specifically, and I want to be clear with that. So that's basically it. That is the... Should, oh, me, myself. Am I backing it? I am not backing it, but you shouldn't take that as anything, really. Uh, I tend to... Something I've talked about in the past is I tend to not love story-based games. The closest thing I have as an exception is Seventh Continent. But when I have backed story-based games, it's because I believe the gameplay is stronger. It's because I believe the gameplay is there for me. Now, to be very clear, I cannot comment with certainty on the gameplay behind this game. But I would say for myself, I wouldn't back it for two reasons. One is, like I said, I don't feel the need to get it earlier, and the price point just isn't there for me. And secondly, on a personal level, based on what I did see, it does look like it's more narrative-driven and a much smaller focus on the gameplay. And while I think I would still enjoy that, I just don't see myself pulling it off the shelf compared to these other epic experiences I have on my shelf or have coming. So that's basically it. That's my two cents. That's my takeaway. I do wish Thunderworks Games all the best in their campaign. They are doing tremendously well so far. I'm very happy for them. Again, I also applaud them for both their stance on being very, very transparent on everything going on in this campaign, as well as the fact that their stance that the, if something deserves to be in the game, it deserves to be there for everyone. I applaud that. It doesn't make me a backer. As far as what's next, tomorrow we have a, I believe tomorrow's video is going to be the top 10 or lowest 10 games that I'm interested in playing Sorry, games that I haven't played yet and which ones are the ones I'm least interested in and whether I'm keeping them, getting rid of them or whatever. And then from there, this is your this is officially your last warning. This is officially your last call out. Today is the last day to enter the Terraforming Mars big box giveaway. I'll link to that up above, below, all that stuff. I need any at the end of on as of Friday, uh, I'll be drawing the winner. So this is your last warning in terms of a video from myself. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If I got anything wrong, let me know in the comments down below. I try to constantly improve the level of accuracy I can bring to these videos. It's easier when I do a full deep dive as opposed to the roundups. But at the same time, any mistake I make, please call it out. I will pin it. I will note it. I will do whatever I can to ensure that that is corrected, as well as it means that I am more on top of my game. There's nothing like being caught in an oopsie to make you that much more cautious in the future. As usual, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. You can support us at BoardGameCo.com. I don't really call that out enough, but we run a, a web store, BoardGameCo.com. You can buy board games there and trade board games and sell board games. Other than that, you can support the channel just by being here, by commenting, subscribing, liking, engaging, and that's basically it. Until next time, I'm Alex, and have a good one.